Big Country Politics on KTAB continues. Well, hello and welcome to the Sunday Conversation here on Big Country Politics. I'm Manny Diaz. This week, our special guest is Chris Carnahan. He is the chairman of the Taylor County Republican Party. Chris, thank you so much for making time for us this morning. My pleasure to be here, Manny. Thank you for asking me. Well, you are kind of a big thing here in the Taylor County because you are you are the leader of the, the Republican Party. And it's always nice to hear different views and, you know, how people uh, see their politics and, you know, certainly and whenever it gets localized. So it's, it's great to have you on the program here. Um, first and foremost, before we kind of get into anything and everything else, because we're going to talk about a lot of different things today, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're, you've been the, the chairman of the Republican Party for a few years now. Tell us how you, you kind of got involved in all that and certainly your, your, uh, what, what all that has meant to you. Well, thank you. I'll, I uh, got active in Republican Party politics here in Taylor County back in 1986, at the same time I opened my law practice here, I uh, joined the Taylor County Young Republicans and within just a short time we hosted the state convention right here in Abilene. And, and that was a great experience. We had a lot of fun with that, had a lot of young, vibrant Republicans come to Taylor County. And, and I've been involved with the Republican Party ever since that wow. time. That's, that's interesting. I can't imagine. I that was now. young. You can't imagine. I was young enough to be in the <laughs> young Republican. <laughs> no, no, not that. But just the, uh, the imagine that that uh, the Abilene held something like that. Yes, here. that's very cool. We had Senator Orrin Hatch appear. Uh, Representative Bob Hunter was in office at the time, and he was very active in that whole uh, program with us. We just had a great time. Wow. Now we've seen, you know, I guess over the the course of you know ever you know. I'm 37 years old, you know, and I can remember, you know, once upon a time, you know, even when I was, you know, younger and coming up, that Abilene was all Abilene and Taylor County were always it was always a very conservative uh, area of Texas, right. uh, and certainly in the last presidential election, you know, it was deemed as the the and I remember. You know, Robert Francis O'Rourke calling it as the reddest area you can see it from Mars. You know, I mean, uh, that's that's how we refer to it. Uh, tell me, is fast forward now to 2024, do you feel that Taylor County is still holding on to that title as one of the most conservative areas, not only in Texas, but the entire country? Dug on. I wish I had that crystal ball back that I sent in for repair. <laughs> I, I would say in, in general answer to the question, yes, Taylor County is a very conservative uh, part of the state or uh, compared to the rest of the nation, we're probably one of the most conservative areas that you can find. Yeah, well, that's that's interesting that that's still held on to it. And the fact that Robert Francis O'Rourke still refers to it at that. Way. I'm glad we made that much of an impression. On <laughs> yeah, <him. laughs> well, he and, and a lot of his his, you know, when he would come into West Texas, he would always and I'm, I'm from San Angelo in Tom Green County. He had, he was he would always make sure and come to this area, but he always made sure and call it and have that label with it. So, <laughs> uh, all right. Nonetheless, you guys are hosting a candidate forum on Monday, February the 5th. It is involving the four candidates for the U.S. Congress te te Texas District 19 race, right. the Texas House District 71 race, the two candidates there, Taylor County Sheriff, three candidates there, the Taylor County Commissioner's Precinct 1 race, that's where there's two candidates. Tell me, it's how, what does that mean to see so many races uh, where there's so many different candidates. I think it's a very good sign for our Republican form of government. We, we want active participation by the, by the governed, and that, that leads then to, being, to obtaining the consent of the governed. If you, have a, if you have a choice but there's only one pick, what kind of ice cream shop could get by with just one flavor of ice cream? That's, that's a tough sell. But if you have a number, well, look at some, you know, that number their ice cream choices, and that, that seems to be in a, a, a good draw. And I think that's a good thing for our system of government too, to have people feel like they can take part, that they can put their name up and, and ask to be elected and, and obtain a position of responsibility. What do you, and, and I imagine you are encouraging anyone and everyone to go out to that candidate forum because- Indeed we are. I mean, do you intend on asking as many questions? So tell us a little bit about this forum and certainly what, what folks can expect uh, to see and hear from it. Well, we're going to give each of the four races enough time for the, those who come to, to witness this, this forum, a, a, more than just a snapshot, quick view of, of any of the candidates, be it two or three or four candidates. We want 
those who come and spend their time to come gain this information and see the candidates in the flesh, we want them to be able to make more of a decision than a 10 second soundbite or some arcane bit of data from some previous campaign or some previous era. That may not be the best basis to choose how you want to vote. So we're trying to give everybody a chance to hear and we're giving the candidates as well a chance to present what their goals are, what their ideas are, what their imagination offers that we could hope would make them a better candidate and a better office holder than perhaps their opponents. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot to choose from there. I mean, definitely in the, the U.S. Congress, Texas District 19 race, there's four candidates. Now, Jody Arrington, he's been our congressman for some time now. But I mean, you have three other guys that are that are trying to vie for his spot. You know? and, and in the interest of full frankness, uh, we've been informed that Congressman Arrington will not be able to attend the He's not in charge of the schedule in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. in the House of Representatives. And I understand there's going to be some important business going on around February 5th that he's going to need to be in town in Washington, D.C. to handle or, or voice our opinions Certainly. for West Texas. Certainly. All right, Chris, we're going to take a quick, a quick commercial break. But when we come back on the other side, we're going to be talking about some of the issues concerning Texas and perhaps the, the presidential race that's that's uh, that's set to hit the primary in March. That more right here in our Sunday conversation in the country politics. Big country politics on KTAB continues. Welcome back to our Sunday conversation here on Big Country Politics. This week, our special guest is Chris Carnahan. He is the chairman of the Taylor County Republican Party. Chris, you were sharing with us, uh, you know, who you are and where you've been kind of uh, in, in terms of uh, the Republican Party, certainly here in Taylor County in segment one. Uh, well, let's let's kind of turn our attention to perhaps something that's been circulating all throughout the political realm here in the last few weeks, and that is our national presidential race. On Tuesday, we saw the New, New Hampshire primary in which, you know, Donald Trump took this race. Uh, it, it wasn't quite a landslide as what we saw in Iowa over Nikki Haley. But I mean, it was it was a win, and there's a lot of folks that are saying, certainly in the polit in the national political realm, that, that perhaps I mean, she should just do what Ron DeSantis did. There's no real clear path to victory, this, and all these resources should be dedicated to Donald Trump. What where do you where do you see this this race heading uh, in the next few weeks? New Hampshire had an open primary. Independents and Democrats if they did the, follow the right procedures, were allowed to vote in the Republican primary. I haven't seen the figures on how many of them did vote, but the idea is that even though Trump won by, I think, 11 some points, is what I've, the last number I saw, he still did win there. So that makes him the only victor of both Ohio, uh, Iowa, Iowa, thank you, mm -hmm. Iowa and New Hampshire, if ever, and it's been a long time since anyone else won both of those states back to back like he did this year. So I, I'm like those who would say, how does Nikki Haley hope to stop the Trump momentum? I don't know what she could do short of some un, unexpected event. If there was something that would upset the whole apple cart, so to speak, that might give her the opening. But that's a long bet when you're spending millions of dollars. I heard that she spent $30 million in New Hampshire. That's serious money. That's a lot of cheddar. And in, in my world, it's really big cheddar, <laughs> yes. And so I don't know how, how long her funding will hold out for that kind of expenditure. President Trump, he's he's done what he has to do to, I guess, to relate to a lot of the the concern, the true what, what you would refer to as the true conservative areas of the country like Texas or perhaps Florida, you know, places like that. Nikki Haley, she's kind of been deemed as what is what they these aren't my words. You see it all over everywhere. The rhino, you know, the right. the, the the liberal in disguise, so to speak. How do you think that she identifies with certain with, with how do you think she could identify with, you know, a, a conservative voter here in Taylor County or for that matter, a conservative voter in Texas? Well, I I think anybody as a conservative. Well, you could I, I'd refer you back to Ron DeSantis. He got more criticism for being a Donald Trump light or Donald Trump the second than for any, most of anything else. 
He was the best conservative alternative to Trump, that, as most people see it, and he was also the highest vote getter until he withdrew. So I don't know how she's going to overcome that. She, she can't suddenly make a chameleon change and say, I'm at least as conservative as Trump, maybe more so. Texans vote for me. That, that would be a real hard sell. Mm -hmm. I, I think Texas would see through that real fast. Interesting. Well, it was earlier this week uh, in which, in which um, you know, Governor Abbott uh, pretty much ruled as a constitutional right of, of, to self-defense when it comes to the southwest border. Now, the Supreme Court already ruled it being un unconstitutional to, to have the barbed wire and have all those different things to, to protect the border. Tell me about this. And what are you hearing certainly from Taylor County voters certainly out here, or for that matter, in West Texas, when it comes to the border, do they feel that Texas needs to do this and that the, the federal government needs to have their back? I think not only Texans, and particularly West Texans, who are really close to the border, I think that the general consensus is that the border is a catastrophe and, and that Mayorkas and President Biden have both dropped the ball and have blown smoke to us to tell us that the border's secure and everything's fine and quit worrying about it and go home and shut up. I don't think that's selling. I don't think anybody buys that story. Now, whatever their goal is with that is open to discussion, but I think that West Texans in particular are, are not open to the idea of allowing this to go on unchecked. I think it's just a natural rule that from the lowliest animal on the planet, up through us humans, we all have the right to self-defense. Mm -hmm. I've heard it said uh, hundreds of times, you know, if you corner a rat, he will bite you. Not that he's aggressive and wants to bite humans, it's just that he's defending himself the best he can. And if we're being invaded, and, and which is what Governor Abbott declared some time ago, he declared that there's an invasion at the southern border. That changes the whole perspective of it then and the, and the rules that apply. And if you declare an invasion as the governor, then you're allowed a lot more latitude to do things than if you just say, oh, well, we're not real happy with the way the border's being handled. That's, there's, there's a world of difference between those two positions. Mm -hmm. And so once it was declared an invasion, I think, as my understanding of it, is that the Constitution then requires the United States to come to the aid of any state that's being invaded by whomever, be it mm -hmm. a foreign army or or just foreign nationals that suddenly decide they want to live in America, that's enough people are more than we can handle, especially as it's being handled. Free education, free medical, free, I hear cell, cell phones, free <laughs> gift cards, whatever else. Maybe a free airline ticket to whatever town you think you've got friends or family in, in Chicago or wherever you want to go. Right. Wow, you know, how much of that can America pay for? And what else could we do with those funds that people would say, that's a better use of our limited resources? We are limited in America. We don't just have unlimited wealth to, to scatter wherever we think we ought to. Certainly. Have Certainly. to have priorities. Well, Chris, I appreciate your time today. This has been, uh, it's, been an, it's been an interesting conversation for sure. I enjoyed it too. Thank you. <laughs> for Chris Carnahan, he is the chairman of the Taylor County Republican Party. I'm Manny Diaz. This has been another Sunday conversation right here on Big Country Politics. We'll see you next time. God bless.